as scripture told us, and he continued there. Don't forget he was a missionary. But he continued in this particular church a year and six months. What was he doing? Teaching the word of God among them. Psalms 85 and verse 6. Can we read that together as a company of God's people? Okay, can we stand if you're seated? Sorry, first time callers, we honor God's word by standing. Can you just read that verse together? One, two, three, go with life. Would revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee. So something happens when God revives. It's not that the person himself rejoices. Is that a generation comes and arrives that rejoices in the Lord. If our generation, therefore, is not rejoicing in the Lord, if our generation is a generation that have so many perversions, uh, sex, uh, a lot of drinking, boxing, and all of that, it's simply because God has not revived us. So I want you to be your heart cry, not only today, this evening, I want it to be your heart cry all through days, weeks that are coming, that the Lord will revive us. Today, I'm speaking on believers, amusement, and the word of God. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you because the entrance of your word gives light and understanding unto the simple. As simple folks, we've come today to learn at your feet. I make my tongue the pen of a ready writer and I write the word of life even upon the spirit of man. After now, daddy, make us all better people. Let us walk according to your counsel. Let the reason for sending your word be fulfilled. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. You can have your seat in God's presence. Amen. All right, so I want you to follow me very closely because it's going to be a very short message because we want to give expressions to what the Holy Spirit will do. When we started this conversation three weeks ago, I started by asking questions about what do you think the church is about? And some people said the church is a place where we'll come, greet each other, and leave. Some people say, I can listen to the word of God on YouTube. So I come to church to fellowship with kindred people. I come to share. And I said basically that that's not why the church is. The purpose of the church should be looked at based on what the scripture says. And we started a conversation talking about the scriptures and what, he, and what God expects of us. What the church should be about. And apart from saying this, I also said that this series of messages was batted from an experience I had in the place of the Spirit. I said, from the place of the Spirit, God showed me a vision. And I saw a mountain. And I saw men around about a mountain on fire. And then I said God, to God, who are these people? And God said, these are the generation of men who will speak to the enemy at the gates. These are the people who will defend the church. These are the generation of men who will stand upon the truth. They are the end time army. And I asked, why are they on fire? And he said, because I set their heart on fire. So I asked a simple question, God, who are these people? He said, these are the people I want to begin to raise from now. And so because our primary duty as this generation is concerned is to speak to the enemy at the gate. It's not to defend the church stupidly or foolishly, but to show evidence of what a true church is. I therefore started by telling us what the church is. And I said, one of the things God also said, is that I should make calls. And then we will see expressions of the gift of the spirit, ministry and spirit gift. So today I'm not going to talk for too much. I just want to engage you, increase your faith, your spirit and all of that. And I want to go back to where we started from. I want to mention for the purpose of those who are just coming for the first time, who have not been following what we've been saying. I said that the first thing the church should be known for is that it should be a praying church. Jesus said, my house shall be known as the house of prayer. He said, they have converted it to a den of thieves. Our days, we have not done that. We have turned it to a den of connections. But that's not what Jesus said. He said, it should primarily be a house of prayer. And then number two, what did God say? Uh, and I said we must return to prayer. And then he said, this, the church, the early church was a church who knew and had an understanding of the dispensation they lived in. The, prophetically, they knew. And that's why they quoted Joel 2.28. It shall come to pass in those days, I'll pour my spirit upon all flesh. 
And I said dispensationally, they had an understanding so it was easy for them to flow with what the Spirit was saying. And I said, where are the sons and the daughters that will prophesy in my age? I asked the simple question, where is the healing that should take place in these days? Where are the old men with dreams in this, day, in this time? And I asked, I, I remember I said, I, I used Minister Gwenga as an example. I said, you came to church and you preached, probably whom uh, 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 you jumped on stage, did all of that. And then you got home and then your wife is just a little bit sick and you say, uh, go bring Parastamo. And then your son comes on stage and says, daddy, daddy, I thought you said Jesus heals. So how can we say our, uh, the reality of the things we preach and say when we have not tasted and do the truth of the gospel? Paul said that Jesus, the spirit bear witness with their gospel, with signs and with wonders. We've never healed a dick. So when somebody comes amongst us and, and they say the person has cancer, we're already crying for the person. Are you with me? It's our belief that there is no hope. Why? Because we, our God has not healed even a dick. He didn't heal Qatar. So we have pastors who when you go to them and they say, I, I, I have a dick, I'm, a little, I'm, not feeling, I'm not feeling too good. They say to you, when last did you treat typhoid? Praise God. So, we said number three, the church should be a place of baptism in the Holy Spirit. So baptism in the Holy Spirit is not a maybe. It's an experience they came into again and again in the Holy Church. So first of all, they were all filled in the day of Pentecost. And after that time, the Bible says as they prayed, the Spirit filled them up. But when we pray here, we go home tired. Am I, are you listening to me? That tells you the height we are for. Even from what God wants to do in our time. And then number four, we said the gift of the Holy Spirit will be in operation. We stay in church. And it's amazing. Some of you have been in church more than I've been in church. But you have never had a word of knowledge. Never had a word of wisdom. Never had prophecy. Never seen the gift of healing. Never seen the gift of miracles. Never seen faith. Never seen any of these things. You seem... And you argue with the people who are in the Orthodox Church who says the times of these things are past. You argue, you say, no, God can do it nowadays, but God has not done it. This reminds me of the story of a man called William Simon. William Simon, the, the one who is known as the chief runner of the Azusa Revival. The man was preaching the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And he kept preaching the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So somebody had him and somebody invited him to a church. And when the person, the woman, she got to the church of the woman and he started preaching these things. You know what? They locked him out. You know why? He himself cannot speak in tongues. He was not filled and he was preaching an experience. So they sent him out of the church. And that's why, that's the reason people also mock us. Though they have not sent us out. But the reason they mock us is because there's no reality. God heals, he performs miracles, but we can't see the tangibilities in your life. And I say to you that don't ever say you are young. Stop that. Timothy was, historians told us he was 20 years old when he began to pastor the largest church of their days. And Reverend Victor Adiemi was 22 when he began to pastor the Oluyole Church, Rema Chapel Oluyole. And I said, the difference is not age. The difference is the quality of your heart. So I want to go number five. I said the church should be a place of knowledge and revelation. God doesn't work with ignorant people, I said. He only works with people of light. We need to pray that the spirit of wisdom and revelation should come upon us like Paul did. And I said number six, the church will be a witnessing church. You know, we have just become a closed out unit of people. Me and my friends, we go to church. Our neighbors are still not born again. Our friends are still not born again. And the Bible says, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. And he said, Acts chapter 1 verse 8, And you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses. Listen, witnessing is not that you are trained to witness. It's that a power comes upon you, and then you begin to witness. There is a reality of a power that came upon the disciples who were closing themselves up before. But when the day of Pentecost came, they began to share their testimony. They began to witness that with their experience of God. 
And I said, how do we witness? By the preaching of the word. When great power is revealed through us. I told you the story of, um, of um, Yonggi Cho. How a young lady came and, and, and was preaching in a, in a particular village. And he said, no, we don't want your Jesus. We don't want your Jesus. And he said a simple question. He said, is there any sick person here? And then they brought the person out. The man was condemned to death. A young boy. And he lay, she laid her hands upon the boy and prayed. And the sickness went immediately. She came the next day. The baby was running around. The child had been healed of God. That young child, that young child is the person you all know now as young Gicho. See what miracles healings have taken place. But a young lady witnessed with what? With power. It wasn't just words because words could not do anything. But when power showed up, they listened. True inspired teaching. And again, I said, by living an exemplary Christian life. And I also said, number six, I said the church should be a place where Mark 16, 17 to 18 should be a reality. Darkness and light, they don't come and have a conference. When light comes, darkness disappears. If we are actually true citizens of light, if we are actually light, then we don't pray for darkness to go. All we need to do is to shed our light. And what did Jesus say, Mark 16, 17, 18, 17 to 18? In my name, you will cast out devils. That's number one. And then number two, you shall speak in new tongues. But what we do is that we speak in new tongues and we leave number one undone. How many sicknesses are induced by devils and demons? Jesus showed us. Read the, read the life of Jesus. Matthew, Mark, the synoptic gospel. You will discover that the Bible says Jesus cast out the deaf and dumb spirit and the person began to hear. That tells you that was a demonically inspired disease. So what you need to do is to cast out the devil and the person becomes old. And I said the church... Is also, okay, that's where I ended. So today I want to give you two more, three more, and then we're done, and then we'll begin to pray. Praise God. All right, so the church is a place of absolute loyalty to the word of God. The church is not a place of loyalty to men or to processes. It's a place of absolute loyalty to the word of God. Acts 2.42, the word of God. The disciples spoke about it. Acts chapter 6 verse 4. They said to those guys in Acts 4, he said, we will give attention to the reading of the word of God and to prayer. Study of God's word and prayer. We are called to this. The word of God should be the landmark of the believer. The believer should always be guided by the word of God. Nothing less will do for the believer apart from the word of God. Paul, the Bible says in 18, 11, our anchor verse, the Bible says he continued at Corinth for one year, six months, uh, teaching the word of God. He wasn't teaching them how to dance. He wasn't doing a concert. I said it's okay for us to sing and praise God. But we must be a generation that returns to the place of prayer and to the place of the word of God. Because that's our primary mission. That's what God has called us to do. The primary business of the church is teaching the word of God. The word of God in the life of believers those days was the final habitat. Oh, how I seek for men. We will say the Bible says by his stripes we were healed. So today, is it that God kills me now before the sickness kills me or he heals me? That's what we mean when we say we live here. So a sickness is ravaging your body. And you say by his stripes you are healed. So you kneel down with that scriptures open and you begin to pray. Is it that God heals you now or you could die? And I tell you, those who hold on to God and to his word like that, they always get healed. Why? Because God's word never falls to the ground without being fulfilled. We must be a generation that holds fast to the word of God. Why? Because we must live by the word of God. There is no other life for the believer apart from the word of God. The only way the word of God can dwell richly in you is by paying attention to the word of God. It doesn't just dwell richly by laying on of hands. You can get certain graces by laying on of hands. But revelation of the word of God comes only by paying attention to the word, reading the word, studying the word, uh, giving time to the word of God. Listen, we are no longer a church filled with so much power because we are a church who have relegated the word of God. The more attention, therefore, that the church pays to the word of God, the more power it works in. The more power it works in. I'm not talking about fake powers here. <laughs> but true power. So it also therefore means that the more the believer also pays attention to the word of God, the more power the believer also works in. So if you want to walk in more power, you pay more attention to the word of God. To the word of God. 
2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, 15, sorry. Study. Study to show yourself approved. A workman that need not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, our belief says, let the word of God dwell richly in you. That means there are people that the word of the Lord dwell poorly in them. There are malnourished believers. There are people who have been born again for donkey years, but they have not grown. Growth is not how long you have been saved. It is how much of the word dwells in you. First Peter chapter 2, verse 2. You must take the meek of the word of God. <laughs> that you may grow. Therefore, if you don't take the meek, you will die. But I can't say your spirit dies. But your spirit will be malnourished. It won't have valve. It will not have life. What are you saying again? And then I go to the second one. The church should be a place of godly reverence. It should be a place of men with godly character and righteous standards. The church should not be a place of scandal. The church is not a place where you come in and you take it as your fishing pond. Where you just catch everyone you want. Say, this one is fine. Or this, this baby is fine. That's not the church. You can do that in the club. This is not an amusement park. This is not a zoo. This is the house of God. Therefore, there must be reference in the house of God. Even when God shows you that's your wife and say, take a second look, you must ask your spirit, is it God? When believers gather together, the manifest presence of the Lord should be there. Where two or three are gathered in my name, Matthew 18, 20. I am in there in the midst of them. There is a referential attitude in the presence of God. Do you know all of us, all of us, guys, all of us, if they say the governor of this state is coming in here, he's not a Christian, but you are going to behave yourself. But you can come into the presence of my God because we all say in the presence of the Lord there's fullness of joy at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore, and we quote all those scriptures about freedom and all of that. Doesn't mean you should lose your brain with God. The reason many of us are not getting the best of God is because we are too conversant with him. So when you come to a place such as we are right now, you must refer God. You must reference him. God wants to present to his church a church without wrinkle, a blameless church, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 27. You know when I say church, we are not talking about this building. Otherwise, we have to be painting it every day so that it can be without wrinkle. Now, number two, the next one, the church should be a place where godly, divine, and destiny connections are made. Godly, divine, and destiny connections are made. The early church, apart from being made up of company of believers, it also has inside of the church small groups, band and company of believers. These people were men of like passion. They were joined together by a common purpose and common passion. Men who banded themselves together to witness, banded themselves together to pray, banded themselves together to go on missions, banded to them together to study the word of God, banded themselves together to defend the truth. So apart from a church being made of 2,000 people, there was yet a company inside of the company of believers in the early church, which were made of 12, 15, 17, 2, 4 people who banded themselves together to pray. I read of the revival in Wales, Johnny Evans. And you know, is it Johnny Evans? Robert, Evan Robert, and, and the revival in, in, in Wales, awesome man of God. You know, the man said, God in the place of prayer, he received them. And God told him, he said 100,000 people will be added to the church. Now, these were not the days when you count in millions. The whole population of Wales that time was about a million people. So 100,000 will be added to a church that was barely 20,000. The whole church of Wales was not up to 20,000. So when God was saying this, how could he have believed? And so he gathered a company together. He spoke to some students, 17 people. And they began to pray night and day. They began to wait upon the Lord night and day. And when he went out, revival came. The all of Wales, they had to be teaching the horses, the moose, what you call horses, or what you call camels. They had to be teaching them. Because before that time of revival, they caused them to do things. They caused animals. So they caused animals. And say, 
gather, fuck off, all of those things. And then they respond to that. So because all the people now were changed people, they could not cause the animals. So the animals were no longer responding. You know what they had to do? They had to import new moves and new ones so that they can train them in the new way of life. That was not a revival that affected men. It affected animals too. What happened? Because a group of men stood and prayed. They banded themselves together. When will revival come? It is not when all of this church start, but when God set the heart of a few men on fire and they gathered themselves together and began to pray. How blessed I was when I heard that the company of people amongst us here throughout, last, throughout this last week, they were praying. They came together and were praying. Four hours, five hours. I asked them, I said, what are you praying for? They said they don't even know. They were just praying in the spirit. They were just calling forth God. They were just asking God to move in our days. What is that? That's the reality of God. That, is, that tells you that revival is bad. I love the way Robert Leodon put revival. He said revival is God setting the heart of people on fire for him. You just discover you begin to task for God. You're asking yourself, why? Why am I not satisfied? I thought I just prayed. Why am I not satisfied? I thought I just read the Bible. Why is there more in my spirit? Why is there more in my heart? It's because God comes in and touch you. You know, many times you've been praying that you will touch God. Many times guys touch God and they begin to cry. What happens when God touches you? I'll begin to pray right now. Some of you will begin to cry. Hard men, they will cry. Some people will be quaking. Because God is going to set you on fire for him. But I'll tell you something about this good God. He doesn't trespass too much. If you don't want him, he will just go his way. That's why I'm teaching so that you can, you, can, you can want him. So that he can deliver all that he wants even for you. So what is the church? The church is a place where men mind the things of the spirit. Mind the things of the spirit. Romans chapter 8, 5 to 6. He said, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. And they that are after the spirit do mind the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. You see, when you come to church, your mind should be set on God. It's not only in church. As you are in school, your mind should be set on the things of the Spirit. You should be asking, Holy Spirit, what are you saying to my spirit? Holy Spirit, what are you trying to do in our days? What are you trying to do in my time? You must be asking for the dispensation you live in so that you can be able to plug yourself in appropriately. Don't not mind. Don't condescend to canal things. Charles Wesley, he said, I'm done with pleasure. I have no time for that anymore. Why? Because the Lord set the heart on fire. It's not something you just say. That's why, it's why people run and say, oh, revival, we are revival. I said, no, no. There's a tangibility of God you carry. There's an experience you bear. And it transforms your life forever. You know when the spring of revival starts? It starts with a little people. But he has the ability to progress to many lands. To many places, to many lands. The revival that happened in, in, in Korea, in Korea, at the time of that revival, only 3% of the Korean population were Christians. But when the revival started, and because they still live by the power of that revival to now, more than 40% of the Korean populations are Christian. Is it 40 or 70? Now, that tells you what God's power can do. Why? Because God came. How did he come? Somebody prayed. And said, Lord, except you give us revival, take my land. Take my life. And he kept praying. And he kept praying. And more people got that to him. And people came. Without making utter cause, they began to confess their sins. Somebody heard of that revival. A missionary in China heard of that revival. Came to, Ch came to Korea. Took it back to China. A revival is going to break out in this church. People will come from other churches and take from it. People will come from other places. And we are going to send, like that church did, the Korean church sent missionaries to India. <laughs> Go and give them part of this revival. But how does he come? I tell you something. Have you heard about the Moravia, Moravians before? Those guys, they prayed consistently. They left where they were and they moved to Germany. 
And they got a land in Germany because a man by Saint Zodov gave them a land. Listen, these people prayed. They prayed. For 100 years, they were praying continually and consistently. For 100 years. People have been saying that. You have had, probably heard that before. I didn't know how they did it. You know what they did? They got 24 men, 24 women who signed a part that will be praying every hour. Just pray one hour. Somebody else pray one hour. Two persons were praying around the hour. A male and a female around the hour. And when they were about to die, they also give to some people. So they kept praying. And at the end of that revival was when revival, at the end of that prayer for 100 years was when revival broke out. Even in UK. And you hear of the way as revival, you hear of people like uh, Charles uh, and John Wesley. And you hear of miraculous things that happen. Why? Because men pray. I am sick of doing church. I don't know about you. I'm tired of coming to church and they call it the presence of the Lord. And I leave the presence of the Lord very tired. I'm tired of coming to church and doing just shouting up, jumping up, canning tears. And we go home and we say the song was so awesome. I'm tired of coming to church and then we say worship leader come and sing. And it doesn't take us to the presence of God. All he does is to tell us that he has a good voice. I'm tired of coming to church and I do not receive a word from God. I'm, I don't know about you but I've been in the midst, in the valley of decision before. And all I'm asking from God is God give me a word. What should I do? What decision should I make? And it seems I could not decipher what God was saying. I wish it was the days of Paul. Somebody would have come out with a prophecy. Somebody would have come out with a word of wisdom. Somebody would have come out with a word of knowledge telling me this is what you are supposed to do. This is what you ought to do. But we live in a days, instead of giving me that, they give me strategy. They give me logic. They give me diligence. They say hard work. They give me passion. I'm not interested. Give me God. I'm a people who are spirited. I'm not a people who are carnal. We are supposed to be men pursuing God. God, who has the tangibility of the supernatural. We hold the fire of God. And when we go to, when we contact men, we set them on fire for God. Listen, we are not only supposed to be spirit beings, like I said last week, we are supposed to be communicators of the spirit. So, I, I'm not only the fact that I pray in tongues. You want to pray in tongues? I give it to you. Sweetheart, you begin to pray in tongues. I'm a translator. I'm a communicator of spiritual things. Paul said, do anyone has a word? Anyone has a song? He just kind of took it for granted that one of them will have a word. One of them will have a song. And I said, and I got to that place where Paul also said, convert earnestly the best gift. So I asked believers, who are we? We can't, can't even have one song. We don't have one gift. What's your gift? I don't even know. I don't even know. And we come to church and we begin to teach ourselves about skills. About skills. We do that sincerely. Sincerely, truthfully, I, I ask you about gifts. You say, you know, I can dance. I can sing. Please, I beg your pardon. We are in church. We are in church. We are in service. There must be more. There must be an hunger for God. I told you when I pray, I pray more. I, I just want more prayer. I just want more. I want more. I want more. More of God. Listen. I don't want to get you excited for God. I want you to get you on fire for God. I want you to return back to the way it was. I don't know about you, but I want to see healings in my days. Oh, let me change that. I'm going to see healings in my days. I'm not talking about, you know, I was talking to a doctor friend of mine. He said, do God see heals? I say, God heals. Say, I'm not talking about a dick that the person needs to rest. I'm talking about real sicknesses. Art deformation. Real sickness is cancer. He has started. He has started healing in my days. Started miracles in my days. Started giving gifts in my days. He has started in my days. The Bible says, and I remember, I read it, and I don't know whether you have read of that man also. When the voice of the Lord came to him, say, who shall go for us? Who shall we send? Isaiah was a very mounted guy. He said, where am I? Send me, send me. And then I think God drew him closer. And he saw his weakness. He said, I'm a man of unclean lips. I'm a man of unclean ways. He wanted to run away. And what did God do? He took a tongue from the coal of fire in the heavens. Put it upon his tongue and he was purified. There is still a fire that God sets his people with. It doesn't have to be your weaknesses. It doesn't have to be the fact that you are good. He had a heart for God. That's all God is looking for. A people willing. A people thirsty. A people seeking for him. 
I feel like saying grace to you. So you have been born again for many years and yet you have not spoken to someone about your faith. You have not inspired anyone to know the Lord. It's time to awake from slumber. It's time to become the church. The people God loves. God is not interested in casting blames. He wants a people who stand in the gates and rebook the enemy. There is a reason he called the head of the church. Jesus. If the living word is the head of the church, then it must be a living church. I'm tired of asking for revival. I want a people who are revived. I want an experience beyond the ordinary. I task for the supernatural. I task for more than enough. I task for something that cannot be explained by logic. I want to tell my children my stories of faith. I want to tell them my experience. I want to tell them of my triumph even in the realm of the spirit. I want to tell them of my victory. I want to tell them of my victories. I want to tell them even of my triumph. I want to show them my badges. I want to show them my scars. I want to show them my triumph in faith. I really do not want any other way I don't know about you. But if you leave a legacy for your children, then the church must work. We must be revived. We have no other choice. Our life depends on it. And that's why I say we live here. Our life tonight depends on God visiting us. Our life does not depend on your account number and your account details and how much is in your account. It's either we live or we live. When God called me, I told him I, at that time I was struggling with a sickness called ulcer. I said, God, is it that you heal me now or you call me out of ministry? If you don't, this also will kill me. At that time, I will already be famous. It's a bad thing to do. Do it now, oh God. Heal me now. Did he do that? Yes, he did. Do you have a people here who are saying, Lord, I stand for the bride of Christ. I stand and I stand with the groom. I want to pray. I want to prophesy. I want to teach. I want to reach out in faith. I want to walk in the gift of wisdom. Do you have people here who task for something more? Something better than the ordinary. Something better than the life you are living right now. First time callers, God proposed that you came today. So prepare to receive the best things of God. Is there someone here who is saying, Lord, I want you. Can you bow down your head, bow down your heart? One of the things God said to me was that I will send revival in your days. I will heal. I will heal. Miracles will happen. Change will happen. People will walk in dimensions of God like never before. I said, Lord, is that all you were saying? He said, I will empower men. I will empower men. And he has begun to do that. He began to do that. First time I preached like I did to you, like I just did, to a church, a four square, I made a call, and people came off. And different and several gifts of the Spirit were given to men. Prophecy, faith, knowledge, teaching. Men began to walk in dimensions that are unusual. The power of the Lord is moving in this place right now, right here. I want you to reference God. 